Now, how can we use this property to solve um, differential equation? So basically, um, the Laplace transform is a completely different method to solve differential equations. Um, so recall that um, the our the, the first method that we learned was to um, if we want to solve this, we would have to write down the characteristic equation. Then we would have to find its roots. Then um, the general solution is going to be a linear combination. And then um, uh, we would have to use the initial condition to solve for, for the coefficient. Right? So the Laplace transform is, is very, very different. Right? So the idea is to apply the Laplace transform to both sides of this, this equation. Right? So we're going to calculate L of this. And uh, let me introduce a new notation just for convenience that y uh, capital of s is going to be the Laplace transform of small y of t. Okay. Then, when we apply the Laplace transform of y double prime, so recall that applying the Laplace transform to the second derivative means that we need to take s square times the Laplace transform of the original function, which is y minus s times, uh, okay, let me, I'll just write y of 0 minus y prime of 0 um, plus the Laplace transform of the first derivative is going to be s times the Laplace transform of the function uh, minus y of 0 minus 2 the Laplace transform is 0. Well, but here the convenience of the, this approach is that now we, we are given y of 0 and y prime of 0. So we, we know this. So this, this is the initial condition. So we can just use the, the value. So s square y y square s square y. Now, so y of 0 is minus 3, so plus 3s minus 1 plus s y uh, plus 3 minus 2y is 0. Let me group together everything with y. So s square um, plus s minus 2y then plus 3s. Um, I will just move plus 3s to the right hand side, so minus 3s, then minus 1 plus 3 is plus 2, so minus 2. All right, so in other words, y, I'm sorry, y equals minus 3s plus 2 divided by s squared plus s minus 2. Well, what we did here is that we immediately calculated the Laplace transform of the unknown function. How do we recover the function itself? So in order to do this, we need to apply partial fractions. So we need to calculate the partial fraction decomposition of this. And of course, um, I'm not going to do it by hands. I've done it in Wolfram Alpha. So this is going to be minus uh, 4 over 3 times s plus 2 minus 5 thirds over s minus 1. Right? So this is the Laplace transform of the unknown function. But I think I hope it is familiar to you. So the, the, this pattern 1 over s minus something is actually uh, the Laplace transform of the exponential function. So let me uh, maybe recall this. We have calculated it already in the beginning of the lecture. Well, we did the Laplace transform of e to the minus 2 
uh, to t, but it doesn't matter, right? So I think you'll believe me if I tell you that the Laplace transform of e to the uh, uh, minus a t is one over f plus a. Okay, and we have exactly did this pattern, which means that. And this is the Laplace transform of the unknown function, right? So it means that the original unknown function is the one that this is the Laplace transform of, and the unknown function has to be therefore minus four thirds e to the minus two t minus five thirds e to the uh, minus one plus one e to the t. Well, uh, <laughs> um, it seems very easy on the first glance, but as a matter of fact, it is not that simple because I have skipped, for example, um, um, doing the partial fractions. So I'd say that on the average, the Laplace transform is a completely different method, but I don't think that it really um, is much easier than the method to solve um, second order differential equations that that we've learned in um, weeks uh, five and six right so here is the summary of what we just saw um so the method of laplace transform it is based on the, these two things so the first is that uh, uh laplace transform is actually one to one and right? so it sends different functions to different functions so meaning that if we know the Laplace transform of our function, then at least hypothetically, we can recover the original function. Uh, the, these two facts, they, uh, they, um, they, they're proof and they're, I don't know, more involved explanation. They, it goes beyond our course. So actually, they, this essentially it is about complex analysis. And both are quite complicated. That, that's why I, I don't really think that uh, a Laplace transform <laughs> should, should be taught in the theory of differential equations. But I, I think it be, really belongs to complex analysis. But anyway, um, so I'm supposed to teach it. Uh, so I'm, I am teaching at least a little bit, right? So the real usefulness is uh, solving differential equations in electrical engineering with this continuous right hand side and the, the reason uh, is because um, the, the reason for them to have a discontinuous right hand side is because um, in electrical engineering imagine that um, before a certain moment there is no uh, electricity and then after a certain moment uh, we just switch it on and then we, we have electricity immediately so the right hand side is going to be discontinuous um, then Laplace transform can be also used to solve higher order differential equations. In we will have to modify, um, we will have to figure out what is the Laplace transform of the third derivative, fourth derivative, 